People are gonna say, oh, that's disgusting. But if you watch that? van videos, sometimes you need this product. This one is a washing machine, a full washing machine. So I would say it probably fits <laughs> maybe four or five pairs of pants and a t-shirt in there. Right, I'm outside in the freezing cold. <laughs> the bit. curtains look horrendous. All of them. Welcome to a new vlog. It's actually a couple of days later since the last vlog. Um, I didn't film anything yesterday. Nick went home for a few stuff for work. I tidied this whole place, although you won't think so. You won't think so. I know, Nick's been back at, for more than an hour, so it's all gone to uh, rat shit. Uh, so, so last night we just chilled, didn't we? Yes, we chilled. We watched some more... Watch? Maze Runner. Yeah. We watched the third one. It's yes. actually on Disney Plus. I thought it was on, um, well, I got it on Google, Google TV, the first one, but then the other two, we saw it on Disney Plus, so we switched and watched it on there. So, we said in the last vlog, we've got a haul to show you, and we have. So, Timu got in touch with us and asked if we wanted to work with them. And we were like, well, yeah, go on then, because we could do with some stuff for the van. Yeah. And um, we've, and we've used, got some crackers, trust we, me. Yeah, we've used Timo before, and it's always been extremely good, very fast delivery. Yeah. And This um, was the fastest, wasn't it? We know a lot of people have been asking us on our Facebook group, yeah. Facebook group, is it good? Is it, you know, is it reliable? Blah, blah, blah. So we said, yeah, we'll show our viewers a Timo haul. So we've worked with them. They let us pick some goods, and it's arrived. It arrived in... About three Five days. days or so. It arrived while we were in Disneyland Paris. Yeah. So we'll show you what we got. Um, we got some things for the van. We got some other things which we'll show you. And the girls got a couple of little bits as well. Um, and um, which we were, they've took. One yeah. of them they took. Yeah, they've taken the. They um, they got some lipstick and stuff like that. Yeah. So Timu, as it's pronounced, Timu uh, was founded in Boston, uh, United States, uh, which I didn't know. I was sort of reading it earlier on this morning when I was just looking up. Um, sort of like the background of the company and things like that. So as Lisa, they sent us a load of goods. Um, well, we, we, we chose. We them. chose mainly things for the van and things that will be useful around the house. Mm -hmm. What I find is really, is really good. Can you remember years ago, there used to be like that door-to-door -door, um, magazine of like gadget things, like, mm. I can't remember what it was I called, but they used to come around and they used yeah. to think, oh, somebody had invented something for something that you didn't yeah. really know that you needed, do you know what I mean? I find that a lot of the products are like that. Yeah. Like the first one here, let me show you this one. We've used a few of these already and tried them, and oh my god. Is it the one? Oh no. I don't know where that is, but we'll come to it. I know what you're going to say. Amazing. Right, so this, this, you basically attach it to the front of a, a screwdriver, and you put a piece of hosepipe in there and a piece of hosepipe in there, and it's a pump. And when you turn it, it creates a vacuum, and it sucks from this one, and then squirts from that one. So it'd be great for draining the water tank during winter, or if ever you've got like a flood or a puddle somewhere, mm -hmm. You pop it in, you put the screwdriver on, and it just goes and it throws all the water out. I've not set it up yet, but there's little brackets to kind of mount it onto your screwdriver to stop it from spinning. And then there's little um, pipe clips that for putting your hose on there. I also got some trainers. Some trainers. <laughs> Believe it or not, they actually look really nice as well. Yeah, I got some white ones, just to, just like normal day-to-day -day trainers. Um, I can't remember how much this one. We'll put on the screen how much we paid for these. Um, so this one, they're a little wide for like fat-footed people, but when you tie the laces, they feel quite comfortable. And but they look very similar to what Nick wears. Very similar. So I'll be using them over the coming weeks. Now this is one thing that we got for the van. So they're mainly for kids, I would imagine. When you've got kids on picnics, they're these little... But they'll be great for the van. They're little trays where you can put like chips and a bit of sauce. So you can kind of like have a picnic outside and a bit of nacho and cheese. Like we get in the cinema, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I thought they'd, try it. I I thought they'd try be great for the van then. Another van product. Oh. So I knew so we were all going to have people, to get one of these at some point. People are going to say, oh, that's disgusting. But What's if you that? watch van videos, sometimes you need this product. A kidney pee bottle. It's a pee bottle in the shape of a... No, the kidneys. What the, it's the usually, I think they well, call them like kidney bottle, shape. I don't know, but yeah. this one has got uh, a man attachment. We'll obviously never be filming using this. But. And it's got a woman <laughs> attachment. So it's suitable for both. <laughs> and it's just for emergencies that if you're driving it's, and one well, of you needs to pee or you... It's for emergencies. It's so that you also, so that you don't fill up your main van toilet quite as well. Well, yeah, there's that as well. Um, and then it's easy just to take out, pour it into a drain or yeah. down into a proper toilet or something. Um, so I imagine that is probably one of the things that we'll get the most use out of. Right. Not that, though. The next one. We don't need that. The next one we'll get the most use out of. And we'll show you this. We're going to show you from this working. This one 
is a washing machine, a full washing machine for the van. So that's your spinning basket for drying your clothes and you put it in and then you put your clothes in there and it spins it dry. Um, it's, it's collapsible, so if I just pop it like that, that's the size when it's assembled. It's mains powered and we'll show you it's working got, after we've gone through everything. It's got a little drain hole on the bottom to drain the water and it's got three settings. You've got a 10 minute setting, a 15 minute setting and a two minute setting. And um, you I put it in. Do, I think on the, uh, is it the box that it does say something like underwear washer or something like that? Uh, undergarments, yeah. underclothes, healthy cleansing. Yeah, but you can wash t-shirts in it. Obviously yeah. it's not gonna get a full load because it's tiny, but... But I did say to Nick, what I have said, what about if we're away for a while and what we're gonna do about his underwear and stuff like that? There we go. So this That's is That's a solution. Yeah. So we are gonna try this a little later on. It is mains powered, uh, which is not a problem because we've got an inverter in the van, but you can probably put it straight into the 12 volt system. Um, I can't see what the voltage is. But if you did have this for a van and you wanted to wire it straight into your 12 volt system, I'm sure you can just get a cable that can just convert it. So we're gonna try that a little bit later on. That's the bit that, um, that's my favourite bit of it all. Now, yeah, living at the lodge, it's very dark on an evening because we don't have many lights on the street. And at the moment, it's frog season. Um, so we haven't, when I walked to the bins on an evening... We counted 33 frogs last night, just on the road alone. I have to take a, a torch. So Nick ordered this torch. It's, it's literally as light as a feather It's almost. as if it's got no batteries in it, but yet it's the brightest thing that I have ever seen. It charges on um, like USB. Yeah. And you, you're not gonna be able to see, but it is the brightest torch I've ever seen. If we and shine that at the side of the lodge, it lights the entire yeah. lake up. It's, it's got amazing. different modes, like a flashing mode if you want to get um, attention. And then it's got like a side mode, a side panel. Doesn't look very bright in this camera because it's daylight, but it's, it actually hurts your eyes when you look at it's it. It's very, very good. But it's so light, it's unbelievable. And it comes with a little charging cable. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that we got for the van, this is my an, another one of my favourite things. I've not tested this yet, but it is. You see these in garages, and when you get a, when you get a fault on your car, um, you take it to a garage, and they usually charge you like fifty pounds to diagnose what the problem is. It's a diagnostics tool for a car or a van, and it works on all cars and vans. You literally pull the fuse box um, cover off, plug it in. Screen comes on and it tells you what's wrong with your car or your van. And you can reset the codes and things like that, or if it's just like a sensor fault, it'll tell you those kinds of information. We do have one already, but no, no, not no, like this. It's a, it's a Bluetooth one and it's very flaky with the app. This one is completely self-contained. Um, it's automobile engine diagnosis, car fault code clear, real-time data, O2 sensor test. That's what the MR2 used to have. Um, frozen frame data, vehicle info, works in 10 languages and lets you print from it as well. So we're gonna test that later on when we go out to the van. Speaking of the van, we are gonna go out in this video and look at the curtains that we got the other day. Uh, and fit so the TV. Stick around for that. And show you how the seating area works. So that is that one. In fact, almost everything's for the van. Yeah. We got this thing here. Oh, we're taking that in the van? Yeah. Well, you can have it, for, I might order another one for here. I think this was a pound or something like that. We'll put it on the screen what it costs. But it's basically a French fry maker, like a chip cutter. Um, it's quite sharp blades. You get a potato, bang, you've got French fries. Should have bought some uh, so you don't have to have potatoes frozen. from the shop so we could have tried that. This one is, if you want to show... Some of the things I haven't even seen, I don't know what this is. Oh yeah, so I don't know what it is. It's, um, it's got a sticker on it, but there's the box. Um, and it's to hang wine glasses up in the van. Well, not in the well, van. Well, anywhere really, it's going to yeah. be in the... So we're, we're going to fix this into the top of the cupboard and then slide the wine glasses on. Another thing for the van is we have, the, the garage area of the van is pitch black on a night and there's no lighting down there. So I figured we need to wire in a, um, a light, a light strip. I'm just going to have to tear the box, it's quite tight, we packed. So we've got this strip light that comes with a nice handy sticker on and off button. And I'm going to fix that using these little clips to the under, underside of the bed. And whenever we're in the garage, you just push the button because it'll be wired in using the 12 volt system. Push the button and we'll have nice bright area in the garage when we're in there fumbling for things on a night. Right, the next one is a washing line Ooh. with a little turny thing. So that'll, these things that'll come in handy. We've got... Once we've washed the kegs in the washing machine, machine. We've got to figure... Well, we've got to put a hook up, so that won't be done today. We'll hang that up. Another thing is we've got a USB charger, multi-amp, multi-sized one which will go in the cigarette lighter either in the back or the front and let you charge things from it. 
Um, That's good for when I'm in my, when I'm editing the car, I can, um, that's the last, when we went to Wales, he forgot his. Yes, I forgot so. mine. Yeah. So these are bed lights and there are 12 in a pack and you just plug them into a USB socket and it lights you, it gives you like a bed light. Um, we got 12 of these and I, I, again, I can't remember how much these were, we'll put it on the screen, but they, they are quite bright. I don't know whether you'd be able to sleep with them on, but you can certainly use them for reading. But they're so handy and tiny and they're as light as a feather as well. These are not, this is not van related, but we have a pack of replacement toothbrush heads, um, which should fit our toothbrush. I need to change mine as well. Yeah, well, they look exactly like the ones that you would get like for 10 times the price. So they were, I think, £1.29 maybe. I'll put it on the screen. We got a pair of sunglasses. Just nice handy ones. They just chuck around on the dashboard rather than the ones that you These would use. These are the ones that Nick said were coming when we were going to Disneyland Paris and I was uh, buying some others. They look all right then. <laughs> good to keep in the van yep. when we're uh, for out and about. We got a sticker for the van for when it's Ooh. done. Like a little transfer that says one life, live it. Maybe we should get it as own done that says every day is best. Mm -hmm. So that goes in there. You can take them off now. We asked the kids what they wanted. Uh, one of them just wanted like a, a, a glossy lipstick and um, when they came the other day, she took it home. Um, but Masha forgot to take this one. Um, we'll take it to her next week. It's a little storage stand. A little storage stand for her pens, pencils, uh, makeup, makeup, whatever. Uh, another one we got for the van. We got some stickers. You know when you have rings on and you put your hand on the handle and sometimes if you've got fat fingers like me, you end up putting ring marks on the, the paint behind the handle. Right. Well, these things stop that. You stick these on the back of the handle and your ring just, your, your paintwork is protected by these little stickers. So I just thought that'd be great for the van. These, these are a little bit too late now, but they'll be handy for when you're doing work in dark areas. So it's like a pair of gloves, but integrated into the thumb and the finger is a torch. So you basically turn it on. And as you can see there, there are torches, so if I'm kind of working in dark on a night and have these on, you get two pairs in a pack, and you can like mess with things without him having to sort of shine torches. So we've also got some t-shirts and some undies. Nice little silky pair of undies. I'm gonna let Lee have these though, because I doubt they'll fit me. So there you go. Thanks. And then some junk, like just t-shirts, hanging around the house t-shirts. One of them, um, Lee made me order. I never dreamed that one day I'd become grumpy. A grumpy old man. Well, but you can have here that. here I am, killing it. Well, you can have that, here you go. But it's perfect for you. Yep. So, there you go. So, if you've not used Timu before, um, it, there's great affordable prices, always discounts to get money off. There's and, always discounts. Yeah, usually, and we've got a code that's gonna be in the description yeah. below as well. There's always like 90% off sales and things like that. Um, whatever you whatever you could think of that you need, you can probably find on Teemu. They have free delivery and free returns for up to 90 days. They accept all major credit cards and they also accept Google Pay and PayPal. I know a lot of people when they order online are quite skeptical about putting financial information into websites. So by doing this, you can pay with Google Pay, therefore your financial information is not passed across a network. You can also have it delivered as well to a local pickup point if you don't want to put your address into random websites and things like that. That's just like general security advice, but these guys offer it for people that, that are sort of skeptical. So we use the Timu app on our phones. Uh, it's just a quicker, easier way to shop and purchase things. We can spend hours <laughs> browsing things. Oh, I love that, I love that, I love that. So if you use our code, then you will get up to 100 pounds worth of Timu coupons. So now let's go and try this um, underpant washing machine. <laughs> right, I've plugged it in. Let me just connect it. I like the color too. Oh, it's got underneath little suckers. So if it's stuck on a surface, yeah. it won't move because it does wheel about a little bit. So I'm just going to put some warm water in it. So let me get it in the sink. Now we don't have any powdered laundry detergent, so we'll um, have to burst a uh, laundry pod. Okay. So while that's filling up, let me just disconnect that. You can get me a laundry pod out. Just get all that drained in. That should be enough water, I think, there. Right, let's just empty this laundry pod. I mean, usually you'd use liquid or you'd use powder, but we haven't got any, so we're just gonna do that. So that's all gone in. That feels extremely weird in your fingers. 
This is a spinner for drying things afterwards. Pop that down, pop the undies in, and then 15 minute cycle. So it turns it one way and then turns it back the other, so it kind of proper aerates. And there's a blue light at the bottom that glows as well. I mean, we can probably put a little bit more water in so there, to be fair. These are your buttons, are they? Yeah, 10 minutes standard washing, 15 minutes soft washing, two minute, what's that say? Semi hydration, long press for two seconds to start and stop. So we're gonna leave that run, so I'm gonna put the lid on. Right, it's done. So, we need to drain the water. So you pull the little cap here, and it empties the water. Just wringing it out. Get as much of the loose water out as I can. And then we'll spin it. Right. You've got to be careful if you overload it, it comes off the thing at the bottom. So it's... It's, it's bit, there's a bit of water on the worktop, yeah. so the suckers aren't working great. <laughs> so it's but, moving around. But, so you put that in there for I think it's two minutes on a spin cycle. And then we should have uh, dry-ish keks. A right. lot closer match than I thought. Mm, yeah. So that's going to go with everything. Oh yeah, I do like that one. Goes with that. Goes with the wood. Goes right, with this. Put the side of them because that's where it'll be. Not really. <laughs> That's where it's going to be. It do not go. Not with them. Well, it does. It's neutral, isn't it? It's just the same as the white. So which one's this one? This is the... These are the short ones, so we don't want to be opening them. Not until we're sure that's for the back. Show me the grey ones. Yeah. The light grey ones. These? I haven't seen them yet. Mm. They mm. kind of blend more and are more discreet. And they're thinner. They look a lot more better quality though. Maybe. Don't you think? Maybe. So these we could put them straight away because they've got pleat tops. We need to take one out of the pack. Put it against that again. Well, it, it's. Mm, I'm not sure about that. My concern with that is it's dark. Mm. And it's there's a big cubicle area that's going to darken the van. Whereas this fits everything, near enough, but will be lighter on a night. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is the smaller curtain, so this is the larger one which will go on that window. So I guess we need to have a look. We think we've decided, but we're going to wait until tonight. I'm going to go with the ribbed ones, but yeah. when you hold them up to the skylight, you can see daylight thrown, which is fine because on a night time, it's going to be the reverse of that. So what we want to do is make sure that people can't actually see through the wind. Through. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of light, but as long as they can't see in, which is fine, but we can also make some foil um, things with suckers on, which mm -hmm. we've seen another YouTuber make. Uh, black on the outside to keep it cool during the day and then silver on the inside to keep the heat in. Um, they would be as light as feather and we can put one on those on the back two windows and that would completely block out the light. We also need something for here because this is quite a lot of light coming yeah. through this. So, now, the table we built. We mentioned this the other day, but it was from the footage that we lost. The so, video bust. So, so I'll show you properly now. I did actually film the whole manufacturing of this and the assembly of it, and it all went drastically wrong. So um, the, the, not not the actual building, not that, but the, the actual video. The camera. So it up. we'll show you how we convert this into like a chaise long stroke yeah. bed. So that's as it's going to be most of the time, like that, with two cushions on, yeah. um, in sort of work and food mode. Right. So. To make a bed, we take it, we lift the lid off and we turn it sideways like that. And there are holes here and here to slide the poles in. So the first thing we do is take the bed top off, uh, the tabletop off, which is a swine to get off. But at least it's not rocking and, and unsturdy. And then we take the pole off. I doubt it'll be very often we do this, but not very often. Maybe no. in the summer when we just want to like a chill in the afternoon. Or maybe if we make some friends on a campsite or something or whatever, they're like come around for for a drink, we'll get this sofa out. So if we open that and get it to its fullest opened, there we go. And then we slot this in here, like this. Now the holes are a little bit stiff, but I can drill them a little bit wider, but I don't want them too loose. And then in here, we have these little pins that you slot into the holes that I've drilled in there, like that. 
and then it stopped it from coming out and then this side you do the same and you get that in but obviously before I do that I need to put the other pole in so pop that in there and I've just thought of something what? how do I get the pin in with this here? what did you do before? that wasn't there when I built it that wasn't there hmm may have to give this some thought oh wait a minute you can get it in from the side here yeah right hold on so I'll pop the pin in there are four pins, you lose the pins, you might not have an assembly. So, hold on, pop the pin in, like that, he says, easier said than done. And then push them into here and here. Now this is the hard bit because one of the holes is quite stiff, this one here. I do need to drill it a little bit um, bigger. Can you get me a uh, hole saw screwdriver? <laughs> Covered in muck now. And a little bit of scratching on this side, but I do need to titivate and tie that up anyway. So let me just put the... Um, Ooh, it's come loose. There we go. I will need to sand this and touch up. I mean, when it's all finished inside, we'll we'll have like a touch up day because there's marks on the wall. We're mm -hmm. going to put the bracket and things like that. Right now, the pole should just slide straight in. He says. There we go. So now the tension's gone. So what we do is we put the little put the little pin. This seems to be a really long winded process, but the more we do it, the more we'll get used to it. But like I said, this is just the first time we've done it. It's really. not going to be done very often. No, so pin in there, pin in there, and then push. There we go, and that's locked. Now we can put the lid back on. We can pull this back out. We are going to be painting that as well, so when it's out, you can't, it's, yep. it's the same colour as this. And then this now sits precisely in here like that yep push that up there like that and then all these cushions we assemble the bed or the the sofa no, but it's figuring out which cushions are which now because i can never remember that's that one that's the back that's this chair no no it's not Nope. Mm. Nope. Where's that one? Um, this one here. Yeah. We're just getting get into use to what's what. Uh, that must be for other way, the, other way, other way. Yeah, that's it. Like that. Yeah. And then we've got a little one for here, and then there, and then finally this one goes in here like that and we have a chaise log or a bed now i couldn't there was no way to get around this because this couldn't come out anymore to line up mm. um it was just the way it was just how it, how it was just by having that extension but it's 168 centimeters from the headboard to the end and let me take my shoes off it's perfect sunny afternoon you're in bed Having a nap, I'm here on my phone. My feet don't hang over that much. You could get away with sleeping here yeah. if you curled up, but it'd be definitely suitable for like a small person or yep. a kid. Yep. But um, there we go. Now we have to find somewhere to place the cushions that aren't in use. Mm -hmm. Need a big bag for them so that they don't get um, yeah. mucky or out. We'll need a bag for the um, extender. Now, the only thing is, if you run it in bed mode, this thing comes over your head here. Yeah. yeah. So your head's going to be under us if you're claustrophobic, but you might probably want to sleep at that end, yeah. perhaps. I don't know. And then just a case of um, putting it back. Disassemble. It's exactly All the same in process. reverse. Just put that there while we do it. Oh, we can't, can we? Because I've got to get into the thing to take the pins out. So, lift it off. Pull out the pins. It says, pins out, pins out. That slides out and turns back that way. Lid goes on, 
and then we just have to pull the pins out of here. So pin out and rod out. And then this one, which is awkward as hell, pull the pin out. There we go. And then this kind of just takes a bit of a wiggle to get back in. And then the cushions go back on. Like that. A lot easier putting it back. Yeah. So we are going to scotch guard the cushions again because I've only had one coat. Yeah. So we're going to do that now. But they are quite. Um, this is the one that we got. Heavy smelling. Yeah. Heavy duty water shield. Just to keep them uh, hopefully looking new as long as possible. That is. There we go. Back into uh, back to how it probably will be a lot. Although just before we did that, I was having a little lay down, and I must say it was very comfortable. So we may actually put it into that mode more often than I thought. I would imagine when we're stopped and we're doing like in the summer or we're camping somewhere. I mean, we're going to be there for a while. Yeah, we'll, we'll just probably get, get it, it set out, up yeah. in a relaxing mode. So, so it, it makes mind it's already had one coat. Yeah, yeah, it makes them quite wet, doesn't it? So you've got to leave them for what, 24 hours or something? Um, a couple of hours just to dry. It's just, it's actually a hydrocarbon, so it's like a petrol derivative, and it smells quite painty, a bit like a varnish smell. And it's, it's raining. It's colouring it. That one's done. So I'm just going to stack them upright on the bed like this, just so the air can get round it, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do them all one by one, and then when we've done that. We've got a task that I've not been looking forward to and that's fitting the TV because we have to get old pictures out and look at where the beams are in the wall to determine where to put the screws for the bracket. I mean the TV is so light that it probably doesn't need Very that, light. The, t the TV is as light as that cushion. Well yeah, probably is. We'll put it on our Amazon store, TCL. We've seen them in America haven't we? We've not really heard that's of them TV's over here. TCL? Yeah, but uh, very impressed with them. running out but we have got another can right it's time to measure where we want the tv so lee sat in the chair i'm going to hold the tv up and if we get it in the right position lee's going to draw a little um square around the bracket just so we know where the holes need to be so i do know looking at the picture the other day that there's a beam here that the cabinet holds onto that runs across these two to this point here so as long as two screws are in that wooden beam the rest will just hold fine i think there that's fine. I mean, yeah, it's close to my head, but I'm never going to hit it. So right. that's fine. Right. Can you come and come and draw? I don't know how you're going to do it. Right. So this is this is the beam that we need to screw into. Oh, look at the wire bundle there. We need to be careful with that. Mm. It's probably right where the wire is as well. So. Well, where's the? Well, yeah, it is. Uh, well no. Wait, where's that wire? That wire. Where is it on there? Here. To the right, it can't be. The wire bundle must be around here, mm. and then this wire here is not on this one because we pulled. I think it's this one here that's dangling. So we have to be very careful. Yeah. So you can see the beam that we need to screw into here, and it's above that bolt, which is this bolt here. And the picture was taken from around here, and it's slightly above. So the edge of the beam is kind of kissing this panel, so we need to get it into that space there, but I now need to work out how far from here to where that cluster of wires is. Right, from the photo we've worked out where the beams are, so the wires well, we can see the screw are actually as well. here. We think. Think, which is good because... Well, there's, there's a beam here, which I think is around here, about that far in. Then we have another one, because we can map the screw heads down the wall. When we put the cladding on, we obviously screwed it into these beams. One there, and then another one a short distance here, which is between where we're going to put the TV. So I think the wire cluster is kind of there. And then another one um, here, and then another one a shorter distance away here. So this is like the shortest gap, which is this bit here. So we think that this here is this bit, this here is this bit, and this here is this bit. So we need to keep away from that. Yeah. section there and fasten the bracket kind of like yeah. here yeah. and here it'll be very close fingers crossed <laughs> here it goes watch all that just surge i think i've hit wood which is good 
This is good. This is metal now, which is good. That's good. We've hit insulation and wood there, which means we've got a good grip, which means that can go in there now. Right. Ready for my dinner. Let me stand further back because it's, it's not getting it all sculpted. in. Get lost, it's, I'm, I'm in my t-shirt and I'm quite warm. So we think that's where it's going to go. You can adjust the TV so it kind of like rotates on that, but the problem we're going to have, here stand swap places and you'll see exactly the issue we're going to have now. When we fold the TV out, like this, I mean it's not fully secured yet, it's only held in two, two places, and then you tilt it this way, it's like that. It's going to be very cockeyed. It's going to be like that. So we need to pack the bracket to level it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I knew that projector would be the best idea. No, we don't have a projector, no chance. Rubbish. Rubbish technology, that one. Hit a problem. This bracket's no good for us. Well, it is, but the problem is when the TV's flat to the wall, yeah, the TV's running at that angle there. This bit here doesn't rotate. On every other bracket that there is, they rotate. This one typically doesn't. And there's a little, you can't, if you look there, there's no way to loosen that because of these. I mean, I could bend them out, but then that bolt would come loose every time you wanted to do it. But anyway, that aside, if I put the, if I sprang it off the wall this far, that fixes it both here. When it's, when it's um, facing this way, and the TV would literally touch the wall there, or we'd have, probably have it at an angle there, actually. So it's kind of like that mm -hmm. when we're watching the TV. But the problem is, when it's closed up and up against the wall, let me just try and do it, because it's really stiff. It would stand off the wall like that at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the TV would be like here. Mm. What we need is something that sits flush at the wall, pulls out, and then allows this bit to rotate to correct for the bend in the wall. So you know what I mean? Do some research now and get the right bracket. Right, I've just spent the last hour looking through about a million different um, TV brackets and handles. The problem we've got, because the wall in the van is like that, the angle of the bracket um, means that when the TV is swung out, the TV's kind of that position. So it needs to have the end bit that can rotate. Now I've just ordered one that's got a three degree angle on it i'm not sure whether that's going to be enough but i think if that isn't enough then what i can do is either pack the bottom of the bracket out to make the wall straighter so a bit like that or i can actually assemble it to the wall slightly tilted and use the other three degrees on the other angle to straighten it but then when it's extended it will almost be straight if that makes sense um i got it right in my head when i thought about it but anyway it i've ordered one of them Hmm? It does mean we can't do it today. Unfortunately not. So I've ordered another one of them. It's going to come from Amazon tomorrow. It'll go to the locker. Um, so the TV side of things on hold. However, I've just had... Um... <laughs> I got this. I might as well show oh, God. Let me finish first. Get it out of my face. <laughs> anyway, so I've got a new socket set turning up because the one that Lee's dad lent me doesn't have the 17mm hex slot, half-inch hex um, adapter. So I managed to get the seat out of the van yesterday, all but one bolt, and it's just stuck, it won't move. So this socket set should just take it out straight away. When it does that, I'm gonna put it straight into the car, and then we're gonna get it across to my cousin's next week, because he's back to work on Thursday, and he can do some welding on it on the seat for us, which is what we need to take it out for. Um, all in all, when we've done that, it's actually gonna save us nine kilos on one of the jobs that we were, we were gonna do in the van. Um, the alloys have saved us about seven, so we're actually gaining a lot of weight now. We're doing bits and bats. So there's nothing really that I can do in the van at the minute other than paint the polytrol on those um, plastic things on well, the outside. You do that it's too cold, it's raining. It's and... raining. Well, you could do it then. I've got things to do. What? Pack my bag. You had all day <laughs> yesterday Excuse doing me. catching up. Sorry, in fact, yeah, I need. Oh, no, you said I yesterday. Need, I need to you... buy some. I need you to buy me some more when I'm out. You said it's yesterday that you were, you were staying here to catch up on everything that was... So anyway. This I, is catching up. I did feel like the other Star Wars one that I got in Disneyland Paris was a bit 
It looked like a giraffe. Exuberant, uh, a bit showy for just general day-to-day -day use. So I'm keeping that for Florida. So That's not it, how I described it, it gets, but there we go. It gets, you know, it won't get dirty, it won't get marked. It'll be perfect when we go to Florida. Are you going to spray it with um, Scotch Cow? Might do. So I got this one, it was 39 quid on Amazon. And it's much more discreet, obviously, just for, you know, everyday day-to-day -day use. You know what it looks like? like. What? It looks like a handbag, handbag, handbag with a purse stuck on the front. Well... It just, just, that is a, well, that is a lounge fly, really. It's a handbag are, with a purse stuck on. They are the perfect size for all my stuff, for all my blogging stuff. Oh which my god! Take out every day. How many times, guys, have you heard this 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 and you'll continue bullshit? To hear it because he convinces himself to try and he convinces you to try and convince himself that whether, he's got the right whether. bag. Go on, get so out. I'm going to go and get the socket set, and then we'll show you what we're doing with taking the seat out. Also, before I go, this when we went to IKEA the other day and we got the curtains. This is what we got for uh, perfect for keeping sort of like underwear and things in the cupboards. Light as a feather and you get six boxes, different sizes. So while I'm going to the um, co-op, I'm going to let you Lee open them and get them assembled. And Dick's going to post all these magnets, which I uh, painstakingly wrote by hand all yesterday. I need a lot of stamps for them. I need a lot of stamps. Have you stamped them with a little press? No, because I got these things from... Um, yeah, but people like a little stamp the, the press. This is what's been done with these ones. Um, uh, I need some more envelopes, please. Right, all this because of that single bolt there that I couldn't undo. So I've had to get... That's the one. Right, so I need one of these things. I set that though. I have to uh, find some room for that. Should fit it. Put that on. Click that on there. Set it to unlatch. <clears throat> this is tough. You want me to do it? Done. Bloody hell, the long bolts. People keep asking, when are we going to get on our first trip? When are we going to do our first trip? The simple answer is, we don't know yet. It might be months yet. Um, we want to get everything perfect. Obviously, we've got something to sort now in under the bonnet, back into the garage in about four weeks. Um, so whilst that's waiting to be done, we're just going to continue sort of like perfecting the insides of the van and you know, obviously getting this TV sorted and the curtains sorted and just getting bits and bats what need welding and stuff done and then um, concentrate on the cab. Nick's tidied a lot of it up. Just just a couple of little more things to make it sort of homely because obviously when we're not in the back we're going to be driving in the front quite a lot so we want it to be all nice and, you know, like I say, homely. Ooh. So, I don't know, it might be a while before we get on our first trip but, um, so... Another problem. What now? The seatbelt is attached. To the seat but thank you for watching all these months can't believe it. in about five months time about a year since we got the van <laughs> we were like thinking it takes a couple of months then we'll be getting on our way obviously not quite the case um, we haven't been aware we've not spent a lot like 100% of the time on the van and obviously then we're away for January um, so we could have got it finished a little bit earlier but things just don't work out like that so thanks for watching it I hope you're still enjoying it let us know in the comments below and um, we'll keep showing you what we're doing there we go <sighs> It's gone. It's in the car for Nick's cousin to sort out. So now we just need to clean all this. I'll leave that one's you. And we're just saying, isn't it, isn't it nice now that we can get into the back? And wouldn't it be nice to have one seat? But we do want the two seats because obviously we've made that. You never know, one of the girls might want to come out for a weekend with us somewhere. It's not just that. We've also paid for the new seats. Yeah, 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 yeah. You wouldn't be able to get a single no. seat cover for a single seat. Plus you've got the expense of buying a seat. Yeah, so we're just going to leave it as it is. Um, maybe something we change in the future. You're doing a good job there. There's years and years of sand off boots and grime and rust and nails and yes. coins and all sorts. So he's giving it a good scrub. Um, don't forget that tray over there, you know, there's full of tray. dust there, over there. There's full of dust on it. There's even a bulb there that came out of the um, central console. And then you can probably do with hoovering behind that seat as well. Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then when we've done that, I'm gonna try the um, the code reader, see how it works, if it's got any codes. I mean, I know it hasn't because when we used the uh, the cheapy from Amazon, it didn't or I cleared them. So we're just, we're just gonna plug it in and just see what it looks like anyway. 
Yeah, let's hope it doesn't come up without less. There'll be something else for you to stress about. I'll just clear it. Right, I've pulled the fuse socket off and then there's a little port here. There we go. I'm gonna plug the Timo adapter in. Oh, it might need the engine started for this to work, but, oh no, it hasn't, it's all booted up. So look, there we go. So, let's have a look. Right, got it working. Because there's no codes in it, it's just not reading anything. So if you choose read codes, it says no codes are stored. Press any key to continue. But you can get all sorts of other stuff like vehicle info, tells you to turn the key on, all that kind of stuff. And then um, other sensors and other bits and bats. Voltage, 11.7 volts, which if that's coming off the battery is very low actually. Um, I don't know what this does. No idea. So there we go. So if I had a fault, I'll be able to read it through the uh, through that section there. And these are the um, IKEA boxes we got. So we got six of these boxes, two sets of these three, um, all for a fiver, light as a feather, and they are kind of a bit rigid on the side, and then they zip up at the bottom, um, and it's called Scub. Is the and we found it in the warehouse in IKEA. I don't know whether it'll be in the same place in every IKEA, but um, these are going to be put into the cupboards just to store pants and socks and things like that, so they don't roll about. Um, what I'm going to do now is take all the new stuff that we've just got from um, Timu, weigh it and get it all in its proper place in the van. I might even spend some time and wire that in if I can be bothered at the minute, but um, really want to get the lodge back to normal. I'll try and get stuff out of the van and, and out, of the, out of the lodge into the van, I mean. That's how we're going to um, shave. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's um, not the greatest of mirrors, is it? Well. What are you expecting it to speak, something? Speak? Mirror, mirror on the van wall. No, it's a bit... It's a bit... Um, oh, it's the ugliest life, van lifer of all. Well, there we go, there's the answer. Well... Um, they're a bit distorted, aren't they? Because they're bending on a, a thingy. And they're plastic as well. So what are you going to put in this one? Well, I was thinking putting it... Like there. So you can like, have a shave. Well, might as well. There's nowhere else really for them, is there? Well, no, not really. Well, you could have one on the shower wall. Could have uh, another one here. Could have one there, but you'd be forever cleaning it. Yeah. Maybe have another one there. Yeah, but you don't really need two there, do you? Yeah, we well, might as well. I've got them. And then... Uh, no, but two of them are scratched. Well, stick one there. Where? In there, in that in cupboard. cupboard. Well, we've only got one left I've now. got two more, but they're, they're well, a bit scratched. Put, put one in there and put one up there. Right, can you go and get me the Velcro then again, please? There we go. Another mirror. Cooey! So that will sit in this gap here and won't touch anything. Let me just double check, check it. Yep. And then it locks and it won't reflect inside the cab because it's higher than the shelf. So that'll be great for Lee to just do kind of like shaving and just do whatever he does in the mirror. Right, next job. I'm going to wire in the light, the garage light that we got from Timu. Um, I've already put the um, I've already put the light into the um, the roof. I just need to wire it in now. So I'll show you what I've done. Hold on. So as you can see there, the light's been screwed to this beam. This is the one that doesn't move, and I just need to run a wire from there. And we're going to use uh, what was the TV because that's now going to go on a circuit of its own. So I'm going to reuse port 8 with a 5 amp, 3 amp fuse in there. So here we go. Wow, that's bright, bloody hell. There we go. Nice little light, that lights the entire back up now. So I really need to test this on an evening when I've put, I've put it on this side so that when you stood, when you come in there, you can easily quite reach the switch. And if you're coming from the back door, you can just lean forward and pop it on there as well. So I'm just going to tidy all these wires up now and um, Go and shout Lee, game to come and have a look. Right, we're back in. Feels like we've had a full on day because we've been doing a lot of stuff that we haven't been filming as well. Um, clearing a lot of stuff out. We've decided to just get rid of some of our clothes, what we've had for years and years and years, and uh, start fresh on some of our clothes. So we're getting rid of some clothes. Show them cupboards. What? Show them their food cupboards. We did all this last night. It's just been about sort of, you know, tidying up. That is actually tidy. We got rid of a lot of stuff that this is when we want we had a day when we weren't vlogging got rid of a lot of our old stuff that were out of date from 2016 and look before at this. we bought the lodge this is all nice and neat and tidy now we didn't film it because i think youtube has got enough decluttering videos don't you think 
Yes, Lisa, I do believe yes, that. Yes. So, so Nick's still decluttering some of his. Um, I haven't started on my clothes. Drawers. I'm just working through a wires box. But you do have too many clothes. Uh, so, we're just going to have this for tea. Um, root vegetable roasting tray and some breaded cod. I'm going to stick it all in the air fryer. Right, so we just had dinner and watched the remaining part of Maze Runner 3, uh, which is on Disney Plus. Is that the end one now? That That's the last one, yeah. So, um, Hannah watched it when she was here and we told her about um, Hunger Games and the Divergent series. Very similar type of movies, futuristic, uh, where society's been destroyed and then it's kind of like building again and stuff like that. Anyway, we are now going to go into the van and try the curtains to see whether they actually do give out true blackout. Um, so when we were tidying the cupboards yesterday, just getting rid of all the out of date stuff, we had we found these which are all duplicated so we're going to put these in the van as um, a little spice rack which we've already got in the drawer in the van so I'm going to take them out of here when we go but um, that's just the duplications and then we're going to come back in and tidy up but we, we kind of we're so frustrated at the minute because the lodge is an absolute pigsty with all the stuff for the van the back bedroom is literally rammed with duvets uh, for the van, the mattress, all my tools are around everywhere. Um, we're trying as best to declutter the lodge and get everything cleared up. But, um, well, it's not going very well. We're kind of moving one thing and then moving it somewhere else. We just need to have a good blitz, get rid of the crap, get these tools back to the apartment when they're all done. I've got a box of stuff ready to take back to my cousin because he lent me a load of stuff. So hopefully we can take them next week. Uh, we've got to go to the tip tomorrow to take the old wheels from the van, the old metal spindly things. So we're going to take them to the tip. We've got the van back seat, the van seat in the car, which we're going to take to my cousin's next Wednesday. So we're going to drive that around with us for the next week. Um, there's just crap everywhere. New trainers that's come from Amazon, I've not even tried them on or opened them yet. We've got some Amazon returns for some trainers that he bought that just don't fit. There's just stuff everywhere. Like, just tools, material samples that are free. Oh, stop your morning, let's get out of the van. I'm just trying to get myself organised and, and I'm not doing very well. Right, time to try these curtains. Right, I'm outside in the freezing cold. <laughs> and Nick's going to put that up and see if I can see him inside. Nope. Right. Uh, well, no. Get off it, you, you're on it. No, I can't see out. Right, swap over and you look. Swap over and you look. You've got to hold it up to the glass yeah. because it will it'll create the, the pocket around here. I know, but also you need to have a... You'll see what I mean. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely fine. I mean, you can still see light above and round, but... It's got to go around the doorway, but even if it's like that, I can still live with that. People can't see in. So you can't see in, but you no, can see you light. Can see light, but that's why I was saying, because when you went like that against it, I couldn't tell then, because I could just see your big fat body. So as long as we can't see in, like you're walking around in your pants and stuff, she can't. then we need to get the big ones out of the packet and pin them up at the bottom. Tonight? Yeah. Because don't forget, they're going to need... Do we not just... The back ones... Duplicate that one? What do you mean? The one that's already up there, do we not just duplicate it? Yeah, we can cut some off, but we need to sew two of them together. Because one of them is only comes up to here. It's freezing. It's not cold. What's wrong with you today? Right, so if you imagine... This is going to be wrapped around here. So what does it look like, other than dangling at the bottom? What does it look like in terms of colour? I quite like it. It's nice and bright. That's what I that's what I thought. Right, you hold that in that position, let me have a look. I mean it's because the fact that it's cream as well, it's uh what? it's cream and white, but it's better than pink. And it's better than white. I don't want white. Yeah, white would be too much. Yeah, I think it's just nice and neutral. It's what I wanted all along rather than pink. It just kind of go with everything. Well, it goes kind of with the with the warm tones in this. It goes with this. It goes with the floor. 
It's just neutral. It's just it's just Ooh. it's pastely plain. Shall I put the heating for you? It's vegan freezing. Oh, it's not plugged in. I can't. Mm. Much better. Much, much, much better. And those curtains don't even have to be cut down. Um, the length is actually creating more of a, a like an air gap at the back. So if you have a look through here, nice light by the way. It's very blue on this camera. You can see there that they're dangling. So it doesn't really matter that they're not going all the way down to the floor. Um, we could even cut it to the bottom of the bed just to tidy it up. But uh, I definitely like that. Like that. It's almost like a like a shed now, like a warehouse type light. It's that bright. And then back up here. So it's it's the neutrals all match. It's going to match the bed in. It's going to match the wood colours. It's going to match um, like the whites on here. It's just in fact it matches this more than it matches the the whites, doesn't it? Like the woods. And especially over here, when it's pulled up there, it's going to match that wood as well and the wooden floor. Just need to change all the cushions now. The only thing it doesn't match is the cushions. We switched to green. Lee doesn't like it. Lee doesn't like the cream. What do you like? There's green. I think it's not the same colour green, but it's definitely got tones of the cupboards into the curtain. And on this side, here, film it from far away. We didn't like how the cream just didn't go with the pink. Cream didn't go with the pink at all. Heather, should I say. Heather. The white, the pink goes with the white, but the problem with the other curtains is there was too much pink, which was the which was the issue. The accent colour became the base colour. It looks a lot better. To me, this and this are in the same colour spectrum. Oh, yeah. And if I'm looking here now, everything's kind of coordinated. We've got mm. the, the cupboards, the plant, you've got the warmth from the wood. The warmth from the wood, the, the similar colour green, the table, and then you've got the pink cushions. And then um, a green there and a cushion there. Once we get an insert for it, let me get up here and see what it looks like from a little bit further away. What, looking back? Yeah. Because this is where I'm going to be on a night in bed. Yeah, but when you're in bed, you're going to be asleep. I'm still going to be looking at it. And TV will be here, mm. swung out. And then during the daytime, you're not going to see this. This is going to be scrunched up and tied back here. There. I'm like warming that. to it. I'm liking it, but we we just need maybe a, a similar colour green to that or that for a throw foot bed. Yeah, because this ties it in the greens. It ties the I do like together. the greens because it's like nature, isn't it? Look, that ties in with that perfect. Yeah, it also ties in with the cupboards, perfect. Yeah, and we've got a green cushion as well. Uh, sorry, a cream cushion as well to bring in. We're still not decided, so we've given it up as a bad job for the evening. We're going to go back tomorrow when it's daylight. We've left the green ones up and um, see what we think to them in the morning. I'm coming round to the green. It's all like natural nature colours. Wood, quite wood and green like looks like outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still not convinced. We'll see tomorrow. Yeah, but you, you've you got it in your head that it's a tent. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you've got in your head. You won't shake that idea. I did say, does it like a tent, the green the green stuff? Well, the way you had it folded, yeah, it did. But there were no pleat in the curtain. You can't tell it's from the, hanging it up and not actually the, hanging it properly. The van without the curtains, before the curtains went up, the pink ones and now these ones, it looks like a little modern apartment. The pink looked like a bleeding boudoir. It looked, looked like a little modern apartment. And then when we put curtains up, it's changed from that. And I just don't know what's going to be, be the best. I just don't know. Next problem. Fridge is flooding. The fridge is flooding. Well, because the, the drain, drain is blocked at the back. Was blocked with something manky. So I've just speaking of monkey. I think we need a new um, that's one of those. Most of the back of the fridge has just been wiped on it. Right. Lovely. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the next morning. We've had a sleepless night over a pair of curtains. So we both basically have come to the conclusion that curtains in the van just does not work. We hate them all. <clears throat> we hate the pink ones, and I do. Uh, we hate the green ones even more. We went in there this morning. It looked like somebody had like blown snot all over it. So we took them all down and we took a picture with just the cushions on and this is what it looks like. And we love that clean contemporary look. 
So, the theory now is we're going to go for blinds um, on the two back windows on the side window. Now, the side door, because it slides, comes out and slides, um, we'll means that we can't put a roller blind on it because when the door opens, the roller blind will, there's, not, there's a gap of about that much, not enough to get a blind in. So, the theory is we will put roll up blinds on the back windows and then the same material will make like a pop on one for the side door and just have it in a, in a like, pull down mode during the, the, the daytime, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it'll be a pop off temporary one on and off that we'll just do each morning. A little bit camper vanish, but we didn't want to go for that kind of feel, but we've got no choice really. No, because Unless we put it inside the window, but then there'll be light gaps around the it. The curtains look horrendous, all of them. They, they do. Look, they make it look all granny, old fashioned. Yep. Curtains are good for certain places, like I've, we've got them curtains here. So we've got, don't look good in we've got a pair of pink curtains if anybody wants them. So um, we're going to finish the vlog, so thanks for watching today guys, it's been a long one, hit the like button, click the notification bell, drop us a comment below, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here or if you've just not subscribed yet, and um, we'll see you on the next vlog where we're trying to tidy up, we're just trying to... We're going to try these curtains, yeah. these blinds that we've robbed from that window and that window to hold them up to make sure that we like, to make sure we, we, we like the look, and if we do... Then it's a trip to Dunham Mills to get a pair of curtains, blackout curtains, even the crispy ones will do for this one, um, that are a similar pattern to what matches in the van. So it will all depend on how these look when we go in, because these curtains here were the same curtains, or very similar curtains to that we had made at the apartment. Mm. We just picked them and they worked and we had no questions or qualms about it, did we? Mm. Um, I might even try and find the email of where I got it from and get some of the material ordered. But um, for now, um, that's going to be the plan. So, um, we'll see you on the next vlog. Yeah, but we'll probably change his mind once again. We have to go to the tip as well in the next vlog. How Bye. exciting! Bye. Bye.